Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to be working with owls in Code HS, and this will allow us to work a little bit more with lists. This one's actually really useful. It'll probably take me a little bit to get through it, but it's like uber common stuff that we do all the time with lists. We go through a list, we see if there's something that's equal to it or if it's inside of it. So let's begin. So we have a list here. In fact, in this one, we don't have a list. We have, we start off with a string. So if you guys go back to a previous one, you guys will learn how to turn a list or a string into a list. So I'm just going to start off and say, hey, this was at first a string that said blue is the best. I like blue. And we'll just assume it's already a list. Um, all right, so then what we want to do is ultimately we want to count how many of something there is inside of our list. And in this case, let's look for the word blue. As you can see here, we have blue here and we have blue here. So the answer is two. But we want to make some kind of loop. So let's say four word in words. So here we can have this idea of the singular version of the plural. So this holds a bunch of words. And this is going to hold a single word. It's going to be blue the first time through the loop, then is, then the, and so on. Now, this is the incorrect way to do this one, but it's a really valuable thing for other programs. And it doesn't quite work the best in this one, although we can get it to work. So we're going to say, like, if our word equals blue. So if word equals equals blue then we want to go ahead and oh, well, for right now, I'm just going to print like it didn't find blue or it did find blue. Ultimately, you're going to want to make a variable. Then you're going to update the variable every time it finds the word blue. So let's just go ahead and say, oh, yep, it found blue. And then if it doesn't find blue, let's just do an else. Um, yeah, print nopers. All right. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. And it says that it found blue one time, which was the first item, which sure enough it is. But it didn't find this blue over here. So maybe we want to find all the blues. So we'd be like, or if word equals equals blue dot. Now this is kind of annoying because it's not really the word blue, but it's the dot. And if we run this, it finds it twice. If we take this out, it doesn't find it. So that's kind of annoying. That's not really what we want. Now we could keep doing these ors over and over and over again and find like every combination. Um, but this, this could be like an entire book and we don't want to have to go through it and try to find all these different combinations like with a comma or with a colon or anything like that. It's just kind of annoying. So there's a better way to do it. So let's just comment that one out for right now. We'll chuck it down here and then let's refocus. So instead of doing that, we're still going to do it for word and words. We're going to do this like this little bit other thing. And this other thing is going to be, well, still an if statement because you got to check to see if a word is something. But now we're going to say if blue is in the word. So it's kind of the opposite ish than before. So word was first here. I guess it doesn't have to be, but word is over here. So now we're looking to see if blue is even in the word. So if we look at this first one, this might not work because blue is not in the word, but over here, blue is inside of here somewhere. It's right here. Even though we have this dot at the end, it's still in the word. So now we can do something like, uh, let's do this again. Print found blue. And then we'll do else. Nopers. And we'll run it. And we see that it found it one time. So it did find this one, but it didn't find this one over here. So we could do something like or blue. Then we can do in word again. If we look at this, it does find it. But this is still kind of annoying, like it was down here. There's got to be a better way. And in programming, there usually is. So what we can do instead, like the only difference between these two is that one of them is capitalized. So if I could take 
all the words, in this case, there's only one word that's not capitalized, and just convert it to lowercase, then it would look like this one over here. So I can get rid of this or statement, and I want to take the word and put it to lowercase. And we can use this function dot lower on a string. So anytime you see a string, you can use dot lower on it, and it will convert it to lowercase. In fact, why don't I go ahead and print word, word dot lower. Let me just comment this out right now so we can see this. So the first word was blue, even though it was capitalized, it put it lowercase. It is the best. It even took the letter I, it made it all lowercase also. If I even make a couple of these capitalized, it'll still turn it all to lowercase. Doesn't matter how it is, it just chucks it into lowercase. So this does what I want it to do. That way I can do, do something as simple as this and have one blue, force it to be lowercase and just see if it's anywhere inside. I run it and now it finds both of them. And then your job in this one is to return the number of items. So you're going to want to make a variable above, update it inside, and then return it after the for loop. So usually it's always make it above the for loop, make a variable above the for loop, update it inside the for loop, and then return it below the for loop. And that should be enough, hopefully, to help you guys out with this one. Alrighty guys, have fun. Take care. Bye-bye.